Hello everyone, welcome to my cybersecurity courses for beginner. My cybersecurity course is mainly to help those who want to engage in cybersecurity work to get started as soon as possible. I always said, you cannot defend effectively if you don't know how they attack. Red Team Technology will be involved in the course, so please always remember to abide by local network security laws, and always remember that any unauthorized attack is illegal. This is a very important thing. Today is the first CALS. I will summarize dozens of attack ideas throughout the entire traffic path from the perspective of the Red Team and the Blue Team in the following lesson. I will continue to explain each ideas in detail and how to protect from the perspective of the red team and the blue team. At the same time, some network knowledge will be spread to better understand the principles. If you want to know a specific skill in advance, you can leave a message in the comment area of this video, and I will adjust the order according to your needs. So let's first take a look at the entire path through which users access internet services from the perspective of the red team. Certain types of attacks can be implemented. We divide the entire traffic path into three parts, client, telecom network, and internet server nodes. It includes user terminal equipment, user routers, telecom access layer equipment, telecom core network, internet service provider network, and theory. Any device along the path of the entire user's access to the internet service can be attacked. Now let's go through part 1. User Terminal Equipment There are many ways to attack the user, such as XSS, snooping, DN spoofing, phishing, malware, worm, browser overflow, browser hijacked, local overflow, social engineering, backdoor, email treasure, etc. 1. Let's take a look at XSS first. The cause of XSS is that the server-side code does not filter user input and output which leads to being used to attack the user's browser. Although the vulnerability is on the server-side, but it attacks user-side, so I classification it to this section. 2. Snooping, spoofing, here I use ARP spoofing in the OSI Layer 3 network to spoof the gateway in the client, and guide traffic passes through the attacker's machine thereby implanting malicious code, monitoring communication content, and so on. This often happens when there are multiple terminals in the network, one of which is controlled, or if attacker bring his own computer to the network. 3. DNS spoofing Here is the use of deception at the seventh layer of OSI to deceive users to visit the website built by the attacker to achieve the goal. Usually, the routers in the access path are controlled or combined with the point 2, snooping, spoofing, above. 4. Phishing The attacker forges the site exactly the same as the site that the user frequently visits and then spoofs the site address through email, IM, etc. The user enters the account password to log in to achieve the purpose of obtaining user rights and privacy. Of course, it can also be implemented in the user's local network in combination with point two above. 5. Mailware. It is often spread via email, IM, etc. Another very common way of spreading is some pirated software download sites. Or the attacker can replace the files of the software download site that users frequently visit. This kind of attack is called a watering hole attack. Animals in the forest must drink water, and hunters only need to make traps where there is water to catch their prey. It can also be implemented in the user's local network in combination with point two above. 6. Worm It is often infected when a user terminal infected with worm is connected to the local network. We just need to properly set up a personal Windows firewall can be avoided. 7. Browser Overflow most of the cases occur when some maliciously constructed websites or websites are intentionally implanted with malicious codes, which use the browser. The vulnerability can jump out of the restricted attack operating system and obtain the highest authority of the user terminal. It can also be implemented on the user's access path in combination with point two above. 8. Browser Hijacked the attack method is similar to point 7 above, except that it does not attack the operating system, they only uses the browser to achieve some permissions, such as mic and camera. However, if the user is the IE browser and ActiveX is not closed, it can also directly attack the operating system. 9. Local Overflow 
In theory, every program in the user terminal or server may have this vulnerability, which is generally used by worms to privilege escalation. Or hackers obtain root permission on the server. 10. Social engineering. This type of attack is hard to defend against and occurs in all aspects of the users online and offline. Offline attack include but are not limited to household garbage, express delivery, scam calls, moments, tracking, pinhole cameras, bugs, free U disks, pseudo base stations, free mobile phones, etc. Online includes but not limited to I am pretending to make friends, social work library, library collision, spoofing emails, various online website information collection, etc. It take advantage of human weaknesses such as greed, laziness, carelessness, and fear. It is often combined online and offline and traditional methods to initiate comprehensively. 11. Backdoor. It is similar to the way malware spreads. 12. Email treasure. This is a way of ordering by myself. I think it is just the most cost-effective way, especially attack an important target. I suggest that the company's IT technical team should protect their work email as the most important point in terms of security awareness. Part 2. User Board a Router On the user side, such as a router, Wi-Fi hotspot in a personal home or a company, attacks can be made from both wireless and wired. We can implement Wi-Fi password cracking our build FACKAP to capture user data. The wired way is mainly ARP spoofing, as mentioned in point 2 of the first part. Home users often forget to modify the default management password of the router, which is often leading to the watering hole attack involves planting worms or malware to carry out DNS spoofing or phishing attacks. And, routers with VPN functions can be easily used to attack the entire home network. Part 3 Telecom Access Layer Equipment and Core Network at the Telecom's Access Layer Equipment, which is often referred to as the last mile access equipment. It is usually the Telecom's Access Layer switch at the first station of the user's exit. These devices are generally placed in the weak point well of the same building or the nearest roadside optical switch box. You can connect a hub to the user port of this switch to realize the attack. As for the telecom's core network, due to the negligence of maintenance personnel, incorrect configuration may result in the telecom's network router being controlled. We know that a variety of combined attacks can be implemented on any node along the entire user traffic path. Part 4, Internet Service Node refers to various service nodes located in the data center or company server room to the Internet. A SRE team and a security team are responsible for operation. Although there are professionals in charge because of the system is too large, there are many people involved, and frequent updates are made. In theory, it can be broken through, but it is just a matter of cost and time. The most important part of this part is to pay attention to raising the threshold of attack continuous prevention, strong timely response and threat mitigation capabilities. Traditional technology combined with social engineering attacks is the most cost-effective way, so in addition to technology, security governance capabilities and continuous employee security awareness training are very important. Very important. Very important. Judging from the attack method, website is the most common entrance of the hacker. Please focus on OWASP Top 10 Risks for Other Non-Web Applications Weak Passwords, Factory Default Accounts and Port Overflow are also common risks. I personally estimated it subjectively, although he is not very accurate. In the case of successful attacks, 49% attacked the client and 49% attacked the server. 2% attacked the operator's network. Let us go to the blue team side now, there are many suggestions we must know to defense red team. PART 1 Clean A Protection 1. Harden your operation system. The most important thing is to install antivirus software and adjust firewall policies. All antivirus software can also be bypassed, it is better than nothing. Some of the default inbound rules in Windows built-in firewall needs to be deleted and add outbound rules that necessary, by default. To keep auto-update, open Windows automatic update. Keeping the system safe and up-to-date is a good way to reduce the risk of being attacked. 3. Use a secure browser. 
such as the latest Chrome. Although some zero days may still be able to attack us, it does a good job in many aspects. 4. Try not to repeat the passwords of important websites or apps. Some websites or internet services will be accessed by hackers from time to time, and they can use this information to try to log into your other high-value applications. This may cause losses for the first time. 5. Important websites or apps try to enable multi-factor authentication, if the service provider supports it. For example, password plus SMS can avoid many risks. 6. The password file saved in the local computer or terminal is saved with high-strength encryption, such as PGP, TC. 7. For company users, deploying DLP terminal security protection suite is a good choice. 8. If you are not too troublesome, you can do IP, MAC binding in your computer, which is especially important in enterprises. Large enterprises can combine the switch function of DHCP snooping plus DAI to complete dynamic binding. 9. If you are an engineer in the IT technical team, it is strongly recommended that you ensure that your mailbox will not be hacked. Otherwise, the butterfly effect will bring nuclear bomb level losses. 10. Finally, please stay alert. This is the most difficult and most important. Part 2 User Exit Border Router In this part, the most important thing is to set a slightly more complicated password ASAP. Turn off some cloud management methods. PART3 Operator Access Layer Equipment and Operator Core Network Security Evasion Use Encrypted Communication, such as visiting HTTPS websites, encrypted IM software such as SAFECHAT, Telegram, etc. If it is to complete financial account transactions, it is best to use USB key. These transactions that support USB key generally verify the server certificate on the client side to avoid man-in-the-middle attacks. PART4 and Ernet Service Node This part of the content is more complicated. From the perspective of the blue team, comprehensive defense is mainly from three aspects, safety management, safety technology and safety awareness training. But first, we need to know that security investment is a bottomless pit. As a security team, everyone needs to know the principle of appropriate security. Because the results of security protection are sometimes difficult to express in terms of the benefits it produces because its results avoid an unicurring event. And the impact of an event cannot be accurately estimated when it does not occur. Therefore, it is reasonable to estimate the security budget in proportion to the expected revenue of the corresponding business. 1. Safety Management 1. Ensure System Compliance It needs to comply with GDPR, NIST, ISO and some specific specifications of the corresponding industry, such as PCI, SSC, etc., and standardize the entire life cycle of IT system planning, procurement, development testing, online, daily maintenance, and offline according to related best practices or guidelines. 2. It is necessary to form an efficient internal process and norms for the classification, prevention, detection, reporting, handling, and traceability of security incidents. And regularly convene the red and blue teams to conduct simulation exercises on this process. 3. Dynamically grasp the list of information assets and risk matrix and continuously reduce the possible losses caused by risks. 2. Safety technical means. I divide the safety technology means into active safety technology and passive safety technology. Passive security technology mainly refers to the deployment of various security detection and protection equipment in the network, such as firewalls, WAF, IDs, IPS, anti-DDoS, honeypots, antivirus software, DLP terminal protection programs, backup systems, etc. Active security technology mainly refers to the purchase or development of some security vulnerability discovery tools, such as vulnerability scanners, web security scanners, baseline chat tools, security reinforcement programs, weak password evaluation programs, bastion machines, code audit software, etc. Finally, we centralize the alarms and logs generated by these active and passive devices or programs in the SOC for unified analysis, situational awareness and early warning. 3. Cultivation of safety awareness. 
through daily internal propaganda and interesting information security training courses to continuously improve employees' security awareness. I briefly describes the view of network security work in a general way. Hope to give some tips to who are newer to network security. If you think what I have said is good, I will explain the skills one by one in this course. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In the next lesson, I plan to talk about SQL injection, its protection and related code audits in detail. See you.